In history, there are events which stand as milestones, marking points of no return. Usually, however, such moments are only visible in hindsight. The Enabling Act passed by Hitler in 1933, followed by the Reichstag Fire Decree, were passed in Germany with little resistance and without public outcry. And even though those laws nullified the German constitution and handed the power of life and death over all German citizens to one man, no one noticed that the line had been crossed. No one expected the chain of events which were destined to unfold. No one understood that Germany had already passed the point of no return. On December 15, 2011, on the 220-year anniversary of the ratification of the Bill of Rights, the U.S. Senate passed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. The bill officially gives the military the right to arrest anyone, U.S. citizen or otherwise, and to hold them indefinitely without trial. And since the government will not be required to produce one shred of evidence to support its claims, a mere accusation of belligerent activities is now all that is needed to declare you an enemy combatant and to make you disappear forever. You might hope that such powers will never be used, but history consistently proves otherwise. Throughout history, it has been the norm for political dissidents to be imprisoned and executed without due process. Throughout history, it has been the norm for political opponents to be taken from their homes in the middle of the night on charges of treason. When a government assigns itself the power to imprison and kill without trial, its motives are always the same. The United States is not an exception. If there was any lingering shadow of doubt in your mind that we have passed the point of no return, it should be gone now. If it isn't, then you aren't paying attention. We are in the 11th hour. We are witnessing the final stages of the police state falling into place. The stage is set, and we have very little time to influence the events that are headed our way. Right now, we must form a coalition across the left and the right. We must set aside our petty differences, no matter how important we think those differences are. We must unify against our common enemy. Our government has become a mere figurehead to the real powers that be. The Congress, the Senate, the executive branch do not represent our interest. They are bought and paid for. They are corrupt beyond all repair, and they deserve nothing less than to be arrested and tried for high treason. We the people have the power to take them down. It's in our hands right now. The government's power is derived solely from our obedience. Its wealth is derived solely from our labor. Its strength is actually our strength. Take it back from them. If in one unified strike we withdraw our money from the banks which have gorged on taxpayer dollars and cut off all payments, credit cards, loans, and taxes, if we refuse them our obedience and our labor and stand in defiance with clear intent, we will bring the machine to its knees. But we can only achieve this if we look past the artificial dividing line of left and right and act in unison as one people, as one nation, indivisible and focused on our goal. We must mobilize as if our lives and our children's lives depended on it, because they do. This is the 11th hour. And when they say, I want my lawyer, you tell them, shut up. Your time is expired. You're an enemy combatant.